My son, Kevin Early, was diagnosed when he was in college with a serious mental illness, bipolar disorder. Uh, four years later, he stopped taking his medication, um, and we had to call the police to transport him. Two years after that, he also had an encounter with the police that involved transportation. And both of those incidents were markedly different in how my son was treated. Kevin, who was college age then, had gone off his medication. His diagnosis was bipolar disorder. And I could tell he was slipping. And so I called uh, what we have, a mobile crisis response team. And I said, please come. My son's off his medication. And he's starting to, to become psychotic. And they said, well, we have over a million people in your county. We have one team. You have to wait until he's dangerous. Call us when he's dangerous. Um, so I waited. And the night he became violent, I called. And I said, my son's violent. Please, please come and help us. And they said, wait, is he dangerous or violent? And I said, he's violent. And they said, oh, we don't come if they're violent. You have to call the police. So I called the police. Um, my son had forced us out of the house. Uh, by that time, he'd calmed down. And he actually was inside watching TV when all of a sudden, uh, four police officers and a supervisor just suddenly burst through the door, told him to get down on his hands and knees. And he was shocked. He had calmed down. He was shocked and stunned. And he started arguing with them, saying, I haven't done anything. What are you doing? And they said, no, we're going to handcuff you. You know, we need to take you in for a mental evaluation. And he got up and he walked to the door and then he ran. And uh, they took out their tasers and two of them shot him twice with a taser, uh, knocking him to the ground and handcuffed him and hogtied him and then put him in the back of a police car. Uh, which, of course, was a traumatic experience for us and him, and took him to a mental health center. Now, contrast that with the next time um, my son, again, was off his meds. He got up in the middle of the night, and he started walking naked down the road, because when you walk naked, you're invisible. And a crisis intervention-trained, team-trained officer picked him up and stopped the car and said, Hey, um, what are you doing? Uh, treated him with respect, asked him what he was doing, said, why don't we ride together to the emergency room where you can be evaluated and just, let's just see what's going on because it's not safe for you to be walking around naked in the cold temperature. And my son said, please don't handcuff me. I've done nothing wrong. Don't handcuff me. And he used his discretion. He said, well, you know, sure, no problem. Just get in the back of the police car. Got in the back. And then the officer actually turned to him and said, hey, what kind of music do you like? And my son said, I love rap music. He said, okay. And he found a rap station. And he put it on, and they were listening. And when they got to the emergency room, my son got out of the back. And he, and he said, thank you. This was better than a taxi ride. And so I see those two contrast as to how he reacted and how fortunate I was that the first incident, he didn't get shot and killed. Because we know that one in four uh, police shootings involve someone with a serious mental illness, uh, police shootings that are fatal. And it could have very easily happened to him.